Hello, welcome to uh, Daniel Weekly, uh, episode 17. It's uh, January 19, 2015. Remember to switch on the annotations on the video. Um, I packed the video with tiny annotations about what I talked about. Uh, this previous week I did, um, did a uh, pretty long discussion on the Packet Pushers podcast about HTTP2. That hasn't. I don't think it's been published yet, so I haven't. I have no link to show. <clears throat> I post, but um, in association with that, I posted a new version of my HTTP2 explain document. I call it version 1.8, uh, uh, refreshed with all the with, uh, all the recent HTTP2 uh, specifications, like the draft 16 HTTP2 and the HPack draft 10. But uh, perhaps more importantly, overall refreshed. I linkified all the URLs. I replaced a bunch of graphics and graphs to make it just nicer, I think. And I added some content, so uh, uh, the 1.8 version is actually probably one of the bigger changes to the document in, in a couple of months. So, um, <clears throat> otherwise I landed the um, Firefox bug 1008091, which, is, which I also blog blogged about, is uh, about changing networks while uh, running uh, Firefox. And the specific part uh, in the series was for Firefox OS and for Linux. <clears throat> so when you have Firefox running and you kind of switch Wi-Fi network to your office network or switch on or off a VPN or whatever, when, when the entire network changes drastically. <clears throat> I mentioned it before, I've done this similar change on a lot of different platforms over the, over the time. So this is the last major change. There are bugs uh, reported at least pending on, on, at least on Windows. So I figure they should be the same. So <clears throat> there are some strange behaviors still. So I'm, I'm still working on them. I haven't kind of, I'm not entirely, I haven't entirely put that in my past. So I think it'll follow me for a while longer. And then now there's the discussion whether I should backport this patch for Firefox OS to the earlier Firefox OS versions that were other they're using an older version of Gecko in their latest version of Firefox OS. So, <clears throat> oh well, I don't know exactly where we go with that. I wanted to say that I, um, uh, right, I got some interesting uh, HTTP2 usage stats, usage stats from Google actually that I, I, I'm gonna, um, including my talk about HTTP2 at FASTA in less than two weeks now. Pretty interesting. And, and I'm going, it's going to be interesting to see because I'm going to get back to them and see and get updated info before my talk. So it'll be interesting to see whether it changes over since last week and until like next week. <clears throat> since now uh, Firefox 35 was released last week and it now has HTTP2 enabled by default so now we can actually uh, count and see that uh, there are quite a few HTTP2 connections being done with Firefox these days. And um, I know that in Chrome 40 is also going to um, enable it by default. I'm not sure when Chrome 40 is going to be released. Uh, soon, I think. <clears throat> Who knows? Someone knows. Uh, I wanted to mention that... Um, you know, I, I, this is episode 17 now then of my daily uh, blurb here. So I went in and checked at, at um, YouTube's these fancy, uh, how, I mean, uh, it's, it, I have, there's a dashboard for all the videos I put up and you can, I can see kind of where people come from, how they watch these videos and who they are. I don't know how exactly they, they keep track of everything. like who you are or which gender which gender you are or how old you are or whatever. But but it, it is still interesting that uh, out of you, my viewers, you're, you're coming from US, Sweden, Germany, UK and India, the top five position, top five countries in the world. And then France, Russia, Canada, Brazil and Netherlands. <clears throat> Apparently. 89% watches this on a computer, 3% on a tablet, 7% on a phone. Crappy stats. Apparently 2.8% of viewers of this uh, series are female. <laughs> 2.8. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know what to say about that. Um, I do want to mention that I just spiced up the touched, refreshed the web page again, the code web page. So now we have an open hub link on the left side on the front page. And I modified all the links on the in the style sheet. Since I, I think, I don't know why I didn't do this before, but I think the underscored um, links are generally rather ugly. It makes things, uh, it's harder to read when you read a lot, big page with a lot of under, underlined links. I think it flows easier if they're not underlined. So I just modify that. So now they are this, um, when you hover above a link, it changes to the reverse or whatever. I think it looks better. But then I'm not a web designer, so I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot of opinions. I know that there are a lot of opinions that the curl website is ugly as whatever is ugly. But, you know, I'm not a designer. I can't do websites. I can put stuff in there, but I can't make it look good. And I can't. That's not just who I am. So that's about it. Um, uh, otherwise, this previous week, there's been this awesome discussion in the apps discuss mailing list and the IETF about what is a URI. And there's been a fierce discussion about the URI, URL, IRI, and also this um, uh, IRI is the RFC 3987 and the URI is the 3986. And they are kind of what the IETF has specified um, but then the old URL that we're all kind of speaking about in, in, in everyday terms, it doesn't really exist anywhere. Nothing is URLs these days, <clears throat> but potentially there could be, or what you enter in a address bar in the browser is really not conforming to either URI or UR, uh, IRI. <laughs> so there's this discussion what to do about it. And I think it's been hilarious uh, reading. And I participated a little bit there too. We'll see where that goes. Interesting stuff at least. Uh, I, I wanted to mention that uh, I have two talks for Hostam in two weeks and my one of my talks was moved. So now both of my talks are on the Sunday. Sunday at 9 and Sunday at 1. I have updated, uh, I posted a blog post about all the details. You can read that if you want to see exactly. <clears throat> I started to merge, or I merged the o OCSP stapling stuff for curl and it's not not entire stuff but alessandro um who, who wrote it he he did um, he made it to work with the nss and the g the gnu tls backends so um, um uh, so, so that's what i've um, merged the, there's still a uh, work pending then for the open ssl backend um it started but it didn't work and there's uh, some quirkiness about that in in general with open ssl it's hard because the documentation and everything is not up to the standard you want it to be so it's um, it's quite possible to do it i think i know richard moore has made it for qt so he had some ideas about how to do it so i'm, I'm hopeful that we'll get the open ssl stuff too alessandro gedini is his name <clears throat> who did that um, uh, I'm, I'm now back to working on the Firefox bug 237623 which is the you know prematurely cut off HTTP transfers when you download something that says content length very big and it gets cut off before you get all the data to make Firefox alert about it I talked about it a long time before because I landed a patch that kind of made um, Firefox consider that an error, which we subse subsequently had to back out again since it caused so much pain. Since there are too many servers that that does that do this, and um, then users suffer from because they use, they use these old server setups. So. <clears throat> I have to do it more gently and be careful and do some heuristics to see exactly when can we consider it an error and when should it be considered an error to make sure that all these old errors, if we can kind of identify that sort of error and, and let that error pass and have the, all the other errors get noticed and, and alerted for. Good stuff, interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna proceed with that uh, uh, this week. Otherwise, um, 
that's about it. Next week I'm not gonna do this with video on Monday because I'm gonna be in Berlin on Monday. Um, but that's about it. Um, coming up, we have uh, what do we have in the in the projects? Well, in the current project, I'm not sure of what I'm gonna do this week. I'm gonna try to get into the DNS stuff that I mentioned last week. That I kind of you know I have these same things that I want to do all the time, but I never get around to do them. <clears throat> and there's a lot of bugs that I have to work with. There's uh, there was reported that um, for HTTP two, for example, in curl we don't do um, we don't have the strict requirements on TLS that we should, as the the HTTP two spec says that we should. Um, that we should only allow a certain set of ciphers and so on, and that that leads to that we can um, negotiate a, a less good TLS connection. And in in, um, in this particular error, well, bug report actually, uh, they implemented a server that then rejected the connection if we um, proceeded with a to bad cipher and an HTTP two. So that can be interesting to uh, work on as well. I'm not sure how important I think that is in, in um, I mean, in comparison to everything else. So, <clears throat> if you want to help out with some fun issues to stuff, we have plenty. Well, we have plenty of stuff, whatever uh, thing you want to help out with. So, if you if you're just interested in making curl and libcurl better, just uh, join us and um, help us. We'll appreciate it. We'll help you get started if you just say i'm on it i'm in on the mailing list uh that's about it then for now uh see you again next week bye bye <laughs>